I had a couple specific ones, but I wanted to kind of follow on that. Um, as you're determining next steps, I mean, frankly, things just seem like they're going pretty poorly right now for, for the White House. The, you know, Build Back Better is being blocked, voting rights is being blocked, diplomatic talks with Russia doesn't seem to have brought us back from the rank. The brink of war, inflation's at a 40 year high, the virus is setting records for infection. So, as we kind of hit this one year period and a period where everything seems like it's in pretty rough shape, or nearly everything, um, which is not an invitation, I guess, to list off <laughs> um, some other things. I don't know, I don't know which reporter this is, but this is an extremely valid question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering at what point do you take stock and say that things need to change internally, whether it's this is less fair. This is a leading question. Um, at what point do you stay, take stock and change things internally is, is kind of... Well, I guess it's not the job of a reporter to present the news. It's their job to make the news, the press reporter give the news. And we'll, we'll see how she handles it. This is fine. Your outreach for the Hill, whether this is fine. the leadership within the White House. You seem to be stymied on an incredible number of fronts right now. Well, let me give you a little bit of a different take on this. Uh, more than 200 million people are vaccinated. We've had a record job growth, record low unemployment rates uh, historically in this country over the last year. We've rebuilt our alliances and our relationships around the world. And right now, as it relates to Russia, as you heard our national security advisor convey, we're working with partners around the world to convey very clearly. It's up to them to make a choice about what's next. We're not going to make that on their behalf. Uh, it's up to them to determine if there are going to be crippling economic sanctions or not, or uh, if they d decide to move forward. But uh, we also recognize when you have a, a small margin and threshold in the Senate, it's very difficult to get things done and to get legislation passed. And the fact that the president, under his leadership, got the American Rescue Plan passed, a bipartisan infrastructure bill with 19 votes in the Senate, about six votes in the House, uh, the fact that we are still continuing to, to work with members to determine the path forward on Build Back Better, that we have the vast majority of Democrats in the Senate supporting voting rights, that's a path forward for us. And our effort is to do hard things, try hard things, and keep at it. So we just don't see it through the same prism. So the sense is things are going well, there's no need for change right now. I think that uh, having worked in a White House before, uh, you do hard things in White Houses. Um, you have every challenge uh, at, your, at your feet, laid at your feet, whether it's global or domestically. Uh, and we could certainly propose legislation to see if people uh, support bunny rabbits and ice cream, but that wouldn't be very rewarding to the American people. So the president's view is we're going to keep pushing for hard things and we're going to keep pushing the boulders up the hill to get it. This is the problem that you have when you don't have ideologues in politics. Republicans are ideologues. They may not necessarily believe the stuff they're talking about, but they'll make you believe they believe the stuff they're talking about. They will hammer on those points. But this is like, oh God, I... First of all, there are so many things you could say in your own defense, but like, this is not a time to be defensive, okay? Like, oh my God, can you, can you imagine if, if there were... How do I, hold on, I'm gonna give my take. Um, I had a couple specific ones, but I wanted to kind of follow on that. Um... As you're determining next steps, I mean, frankly, things just seem like they're going pretty poorly right now for, for the White House. The, you know, Build Back Better is being blocked, voting rights is being blocked, diplomatic talks with Russia doesn't seem to have brought us back from the, rank, the brink of war. Inflation's at a 40 year high, the virus is setting records for infection. So, as we kind of hit this one year period and a period where everything seems like it's in pretty rough shape or nearly everything, um, which is not an invitation, I guess, to list off <laughs> um, some other things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering at what point do you take stock and say that things need to change internally, whether it's your outreach for the Hill, whether it's the leadership within the White House. Uh, it, you seem to be stymied on an incredible number of fronts right now. Well, let me give you a little bit of a different take on this. Uh all right. First of all, we are doing everything that we can to address the issues that you have brought up. Some of them are more or less out of our control. Inflation does seem to be affecting the world right now. It is a global matter. It is a matter that can be resolved through global 
policy addresses, but not something that we are capable of single-handedly, meaningfully addressing on our own. A combination of pandemic-related supply shortages and breakups to our supply chain have led to a general increase in the cost of many goods, and we're doing everything that we can to fix that by getting our supply chains back in order. The easiest way to do that is to continue addressing the COVID pandemic. Now, I understand that this has been a difficult topic, but we have to understand, as Americans, there is nothing right now which is more important than getting over COVID. We do have increased vaccination rates. We do have an unparalleled access to the infrastructure necessary to get people vaccinated. And I sincerely hope that not only do my fellow Americans make the right choice and get themselves vaccinated to make this country strong again, but that the people they vote for encourage them to do the same. Furthermore, it should be noted that while I have many bold, while well, we, sorry, administration, we have many bold plans for this country from addressing the attacks on our voting rights to addressing the numerous issues with our country's infrastructure, it is difficult for us to do so when we are operating off such thin margins. I hope the American people can understand from the passion with which I speak and the message we are working to deliver that American infrastructure is essential. It is something we need to commit more money to, not just the amount we already have with the plan we did get through, but far, far, far more. And the American people should make that intention known. Whether you vote Democrat or Republican, you should agree, if you are pro-American, that we need an improvement to our infrastructure. There is no way around that. You can be pro-American and you can rebuild this country, or you can be anti-American and you can neglect it. Those are the only choices. There. We need some goddamn passionate messaging, okay? The problem is that Democrats are such fucking designed by committee, you know, uh, 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 you know, like, oh, procedural libs, that the idea of, of, of frothing at the microphone is, is completely alien to them, you know? It's just passion that you need. Passion sells you so much, and it means so much to the people who vote for you, too, you know? I, when, I, when I go up there and I see, you know, Saki talking about uh, what the Biden administration has done, I don't want her limp-wristedly, is that a homophobic thing? I'm gay, I don't care, defending what the Biden administration has already done. I want her to be angry that they have not been given the chance to do more. Do you guys understand? Republicans get this. Republicans understand this. Republicans are constantly cursing out the people, the ideas, the institutions that prevent them from being able to affect the changes that they ran on, and they're disingenuous about it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're more honest or that the ideas they push for are good. I'm just saying that the attitude that they, you know, approach them with is, well, it's more effective. <sighs> And yeah, by the way, Democrats do need to ham up the nationalism more. We all need to, on the left too. Because, and I mean this sincerely, this is not just some little rhetorical ploy, okay? If you don't support the Build Back Better plan or other ways of addressing infrastructure, you are anti-American. I sincerely believe that without a hint of irony or optical play or any weird rhetorical just that is, I, I completely and sincerely mean that. And you should say it with your whole chest every time you can. You should bring this up constantly maybe that's not like nationalist like uh you know framing or whatever but you know what i mean vosh populism exactly you that's what we need we need that pro-american is getting COVID under control Eight hundred thousand americans are dead you just want dems to be more populist well i want them to be a lot more many things but populist would be nice we live in a populist era people are populist right now you know the democratic party's insistence on maintaining their allegiance to hillary clinton types is going to be the death of the tiny narrow fragmented chance of a possible hope of a shadow of a doubt that they could maybe do something to improve the circumstances even remotely I mean, whatever fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction we're dealing with here the democrats being firmly institutionalist uh, is not, uh, is not helping us. Yeah, it's not 1997 anymore. We're not in the middle of a boom economy. We're not pre-9-11. It's not before the war on terror. It's not during, you know, the Clinton amendment. We're not in that time. Any. It's, it's, we don't have that anymore.